Can I ask uh, Sister Rebecca Masterton and Hajj Abdul Rauf to join me on the stage to give out the awards? And inshallah, we welcome them with a loud salawat. One of the sole objectives of Ahlul Bayt TV has been to give a platform to existing organizations and people to make their voice heard. And on this note, Ahlul Bayt TV last year launched the Ahlul Bayt Awards for Excellence. This initiative was designed to celebrate the outstanding contribution made by individuals in our community. And Alhamdulillah, today we have chosen eight remarkable people who have done so much without recognition and appreciation. The first award for his outstanding services to the community in public recitation of supplications. I started reciting while I was very young at the age of 13 in Zanzibar. My late father was instrumental because he himself was a Qari. And this is how I proceeded. There was a special kind of uh, passion in me. I recite the Holy Quran and I used, we used to recite uh, something called Barzanji, very well known in East Africa, in Zanzibar during the wilad at the birth of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Munajat of Imam Ali السلام, which he recited in Masjid Kufa, which has Mawlai, Mawlai, uh, I st we started reciting it very early in the morning, especially in the month of Ramadan. I said to myself, why not reciting it during the uh, Laylatul Qadr, Layali Al Qadr, on 19th or 21st, 23rd. So I suggested if we could recite it on 21st night and uh, Alhamdulillah the community took it very well and said okay we will start reciting. This is go goes back about 60 years ago. When I moved to Dar es Salaam for 10 years from 1967 to 77, every year continuously on the 21st night of the month of Ramadan I used to recite this munajat and Alhamdulillah today throughout the world this munajat is being recited. Uh, Muhammad Siddiq al Minshawi or Muhammad Khalil al Husri, Abu al Anin Shaisha, these were also the ones who were, who were inspiration to me. So, apart from my late father and Alhamdulillah, all the teachers, our, our uh, community teachers in Zanzibar, it, were, it was these reciters from, from Egypt, they were also quite uh, an inspiration to me. It's, it's a pleasure for me and for anyone for that matter to serve the community and uh, I enjoy serving the community whatever I can in my humblest way. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if in a little way I've done anything to serve the community I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I think we should all of us together continue to serve the community for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الله مسلم أما بعد respected scholars my elders brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I feel deeply honored to have been nominated as one of the recipients of Ahlul Bayt TV Award. I should admit though that I was a little bit stunned when I learned about this nomination. Anyway, I will not do justice if I did not mention that the credit really goes to all those teachers and the guides who helped me, who trained me, and 
who helped me in all ways whenever I needed them. I thank them. And above all, my late father, who himself was a teacher and a qari. Once again, Jazakallah. He was really an inspiration to me. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The second award for her outstanding services in education to the community. My name is Alia Azam. I work in Al Sadiq and Al Zara schools. I'm a science teacher and I also um, conduct lots of interfaith work. I trained at the Institute of Education as a science teacher. My first job was this school, which was the first uh, Shia Muslim school in the whole of Europe. The school has been running since 1991. The ethos is manifested through interaction with the pupils. We try and uh, alter the curriculum to try and make it um, Islamic in certain aspects. We, we actually made um, a DVD called The Spirit of Unity which looks at the similarities and differences between Sunnis and Shias. We have actually sent this to um, a company which um, is one of the biggest websites for teachers. Um, we've also made, um, with the help of Dr. Chris Hewer, other resources. We've made The Spirit of Hijab which we have launched in St. Ethelberger's Church last year. Our school, um, a Jewish school and a Catholic school have been selected to work together at the Learning Zone in Wembley Stadium where children of other faiths mix together and learn from each other. Alhamdulillah, we, you know, we're very happy and um, you know, very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for um, you know, giving them the tawfiq to achieve success. Um, and uh, we're very proud of them. We're very proud of the students. Being part of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at the, the lives and how, you know, the human beings develop and become young adults, um, it, it's very rewarding. It's something that I would encourage because I, you know, I have seen the fruits of working in a faith school. But the future of religious education is about all our futures. We must not succumb to the dichotomy of us and them. We must transcend our differences, not deny our differences, but affirm our common humanity to show that we are independent, co-independent and interrelated to one another. Alia Azim. In the name of Allah, the lovingly compassionate, the lovingly merciful. Um, I'd like to first convey my thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'd like to convey my thanks to Ayatollah Sayyid Fadil Milani, who has been a pillar of support and a beacon of light for me. And the alims who are involved in the spirit of unity, we have Sheikh Ayyub and Sheikh Muhammad Hilli present here today. Um, thank you very much indeed for your help and um, my thanks to all the children of Al Sadiq and Al Zaira school and we look forward to seeing many more Muslim schools who will be uh, a standard of excellence not just for academic education but moral excellence. Thank you. Our third award for his outstanding services to Ahlul Bayt TV. My involvement with Ahlul Bayt TV, it wasn't like handing a CV and then coming certain day for interview and start working. One day, Brother Amir phoned me saying, uh, said Mehdi Mudaris is here, is here in London and they want to talk to you. And the idea was to expand the basic production uh, unit to a bigger channel like Alabet TV and uh, 
We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and we start it. I say, okay, it's the best time you can serve Ahlul Bayt alayhum It was my first time going back to Iraq after nearly 33 or 34 years. And uh, when we got there, it was uh, four of us, myself, Sister Rebecca, Brother Arif and Mullah Ali Fadil. First day, not working, no, go to Imam Ali Salam. Turek as salah because it was beginning of Muharram, so it was quiet. You could just go there to the Haram, touch the Dharih, and ask Imam just to, to help us really. For the second trip, we had an experience of the first trip, and but we had a bigger team. Alhamdulillah managed to get permission, which was what's really exclusive and a special permission for the team, Ahlul Bayt team, to stand by the Qatlagah. Uh, we call it in Arabic, Shabbak al Madbah. One of the officials said, Haji, I don't know what you have done. But this is, I've been working here for many, many years, but I have not seen a lady, especially talking in foreign language, to stand by the Qatlaga, the window of Qatlaga, and then present program. It was amazing. It was really amazing. From a personal view, a channel has strengthened my belief to Ahlul Bayt Alam When you see such a these, um, what we call it in Arabic, Mukashafa or Baraka or blessings, you know what you're doing is the right thing you're doing. When it comes to medical condition, when you receive that help in whatever condition you have, and in a moment of you are either 99% going to be paralyzed after the operation, well, I say, okay, thank you very much, but I think it's the other way, because we've got Ahlul Bayt it, If it wasn't for that barakah and the moment, or that turba, that khak, which what I saw, Doctor said, this is impossible. When you see all these, you have been given, okay? Would you say, I don't care about the channel? The more you know Ahlul Bayt Ali Salam, the more you, you would love to be at their service. Welcome the father figure of Ahlul Bayt TV, Ahmed Al Kadhimi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, I don't know what introdu introduction uh, Brother Mas'ud said but uh, let me thank all the Ahlul Bayt TV team. Okay, the Ahlul Bayt TV starts with T. But if it wasn't for the hard work of the whole team around here, Sister Rebecca and everybody, we all wouldn't have been here. And uh, many thanks to you all. It's really a great honor to come here and to receive this award. And I would like to present this award to the hard-working Ahlul Bayt TV team, especially people who are working behind the cameras in production, in engineering. If it wasn't for their hard work, this channel wouldn't be on air. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much all. Our fourth award for her outstanding contribution towards ladies' public speaking. My name is Zakira Shiroz Jaffer Dalla, and uh, I'm an Islamic lecturer. You know, I never went on this path with a, with a plan. I started probably about eight years ago, really finding that I had so much to share. Recently, we had the Ashura Assembly in uh, Leicester uh, last year, and uh, I was the only female speaker at that assembly. And I found that I had inspired a man who was a non-Muslim, and what attracted him to, the, to our religion was that our women uh, have a voice and that we encourage each other to speak out in public. So one of the ways that I really reach out to people is through my Facebook. SubhanAllah, I'm able to do a lot of writing through Facebook and do a lot of preaching that way. As a reciter, I'll tell you, I'm the one who stands to be inspired the most by what I do. Because the best way you can learn something is to teach it. 
Some of the difficulties also is just being a mother and having children that need you. But I'm so lucky to have a, a supportive family that has uh, taken care of the kids for me and just said, go forward and don't think about anything. We're, we're managing things over here. My role model really has been my mother. For whatever I've learned about Islam now, I realize she's already taught it to me through her actions. And I fought with her about the things that she was doing. And she would say, no, this is the right thing to do. And now I realize truly it was the right thing to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has preached it. it. Brings us back to having uh, female speakers because when you have women in the community who are good role models, then it's our children who stand to benefit. This is the Insight magazine of the World Federation. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, this is me in Leicester, this is me in Karachi, and uh, mashallah, the students of Al Murtaza school. The, uh, there were 1,700 students in the audience. One of the things that I've increasingly become known for is my puppet shows. And uh, this was not something I planned, it's just that I found that there were a lot of little, little kids in the audience who needed also to get a message. And so I developed these puppet shows. I would say also that uh, having a, ch a channel like Ahlul Bayt TV uh, channel has also uh, done a lot for me, I must say, because when I was interviewed by Sister Zahra Al Alawi uh, about my experiences, a lot of people learned about me all over the world and that's when I realized how far reaching the, uh, the influence of this channel is. Every corner of the world is having the Ahlul Bayt salam, in their household. Shairuz Jafar. Eight years ago, Something happened to me that made my mediocre, meaningless life just rock and shake from its very foundation. Some people may say that it's a dream that I had, but I know that it was as real and more real than I've experienced anything in my life. And I want to tell you this today because this is a very special day for me. And I haven't shared the story with too many people, but after today, <laughs> I think the world will know. But eight years ago, I saw in, my, in the darkness of my room the shape and the silhouette. And it was a king. And I can tell you the gold edgings of his robe, the amama, everything, I can describe it to you. And the way he carried himself, I knew without a doubt that this was the eighth imam, Imam Ali Radha alayhi salam. And he said to me, tell them about us in good times and in difficult times. And the road and the path he took me on is, has been beyond my wildest imagination. And it is no coincidence that it is on his birthday that the most precious thing in my life has come to me. This gift is not from a TV station, it's from Ahlul Bayt. And this is what I have lived for and what I want to die for. I've talked about a great man who has led me on this path. I also want to mention two other great men in my life. One, my marhum father, who as a father of four daughters, taught us to have courage and confidence. And the second is my husband, Dr. Mohsen Dala, table 15, where are you? Who has helped me live that courage. And, alhamdulillah, babysat the kids and cooked while I'm gone. <laughs> Jazakallah to both of them. And thank you to all of you for this. There is no word to describe what this is to me. This is gonna be the most precious thing. I treasure it, and I ask you to pray that I can be deserving of this for me. That's all you can do for me. Thank you so much. For his outstanding services to the community in social affairs.
my job from the establishment of Islamic Center in England uh, was uh, to take care of the family and social affairs and also other important part that I play at this center is uh, talking to people who want to embrace Islam. 30 years now, I mean since uh, 1980s since 1980 when I arrived uh, in UK f first. I used to get the most difficult and hard cases. I mean, there were cases that were hanging around for almost 20 years and nobody had been able to solve it. So I made an effort and uh, took the responsibility of the case and then wrote uh, letters to the Maraja Taqlid in Qom and Najaf. And they gave me the authority to deal with such cases. When I uh, was uh, studying in Qum, uh, I had a very general idea that I want to become a scholar like my father and uh, serve the community. Majority of the scholars at that time in the 80s, they were busy either uh, giving lectures and speeches and uh, they were not really involved in addressing these issues. I felt it was an obligation and responsibility to do, to deal with it. Around 30,000 cases I have dealt with. I would say that the case that uh, made me or sort of uh, pushed me into this direction was one of the uh, oldest cases in London. Uh, and this lady had been to many scholars, many ulama, and none of them had solved her problem and then she went to Sunni scholars and they divorced her and then uh, when I arrived uh, around that time in the 80s she was told that she had committed uh, sin so she came and cried uh, in front of me that look I don't want to commit sin but the scholars have not dealt with my case and made me to do this and I want this problem to be sorted out once and, uh, and for all so she came to me and I, that inspired me to write the letter. Maybe uh, that was the uh, case that uh, pushed me into this sector of society. Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi. Assalamu uh, alaikum. I was told that uh, food is ready and uh, I had prepared an hour's speech. <laughs> so I have to reduce it to 30 seconds now. So uh, thank you for the reward, uh, for the award. Uh, I pray, uh, I pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving tawfiq and blessing to me to serve the community and to my parents and especially my family members who go through a lot because of the job, the type of job I do. Uh, usually, I, I, I was not expecting the award because I know that 50% of people who come to me are not happy with me. <laughs> because you can't please all. Especially in divorce cases, you can never please two parties. So one of them definitely goes against you. And bro Brother Sheikh Ayub was telling me that you need bodyguards. And, uh, and uh, I, I had been strangled by some of my clients as well sometimes. So it's a difficult job. Anyway, uh, and my family suffer a lot. And I pray thanks to them as well for uh, allowing me to do what I do. Uh, without their help and support, I would not have achieved this. Thank you very much. for his outstanding services in public affairs for the community. Well, my name is Yusuf al Khoui. I'm the Public Affairs Director of al Khoui Foundation. And we are involved in many facets of life in the UK for the Muslim community. We are involved in community cohesion, 
we're involved in education, we're involved in the national curriculum, we're involved in um, the prisons. We are also involved with empowering women and having programs of sports programs and others for them. What has inspired me is really how uh, lovely my community and the Muslim community is, but how badly understood we are, how our rights are not given, and this is what prompted me to try to bridge the gap between our needs and uh, our power. We have a very dedicated staff at the foundation. We have a lot of volunteers who volunteer to do the work. A great number of lawyers, doctors, who come and say we believe in this work and we want to be part of it. A big part of our work is interfaith work and we try to uh, explain and understand and work together with other faiths to raise standards of our places of worship, uh, to find uh, the structures to deal with issues like uh, public health, issues like the environment. We have managed to get uh, Muslim Imams recognized in the prison service. When in the 1990s, when we started this work, there was not a single full-time Muslim Imam. Uh, we also managed to be on the board of uh, um, uh, organizations which deals with Islamophobia, which deals with anti-racism, which deals with uh, uh, any public facet. Uh, we hold uh, celebrations for Eid in Parliament. We have a very active youth club. We have a very active number of youths who come, want to know, want to learn. These are real achievements which one can only get through working hard and working on the street, working with the youth. I am very much motivated and encouraged by the need to serve our faith, our Holy Prophet, his disciples, our living Imam, to serve him in the best possible way so that they are proud of us as their disciples. Sayyid Yusuf Al Khoui, who couldn't be here today, but collecting the award, his son Ali Al Khoui and his daughter Fatima Al Khoui. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'd like to thank Ahlul Bayt TV today on behalf of my father, who really appreciates this award and who inspires me every day because he never stops working for the community, alhamdulillah. And I hope that one day I can follow in his footsteps and so can many other people as well to serve the community. And my father asked me to send his salams to everyone and thanks and his apologies that he couldn't be here today as uh, he was abroad. Um, but I, I just also want to say I'm so proud of my father and thank you to Ahlul Bayt TV. Uh, you're doing a great job. I know most of you very humble, humble people doing a great job serving the community. Uh, so thank you very much. Hope you enjoy your dinner. For his contribution towards interfaith and education. My name is Dr. Chris Hewer, and I work in the field of educating ordinary adult people to understand about Islam and to work more closely in Christian-Muslim relations. The first reason that I'm engaged in this work is that I am a believer, and on the Day of Judgment, I will have to give an account to God for the way in which I have spent my life. So when God says to me, I sent amongst you in Britain another faithful community. What made you so arrogant as a Christian that you thought that I couldn't speak to you through them? My journey into this field began, as many things do for people of faith, with an accident as it appeared. In the early 80s, I was assigned in the city of Birmingham to a secondary school to be a specialist teacher of religious education. It didn't take me long to realize that I knew nothing about Islam. And so I went away to study 
part-time while still being a full-time teacher and did a master's degree in Islamic studies. And that was how I begin in 1986. People have a profound misunderstanding about the person of the Prophet. As we see, there are quite often scurrilous attacks upon the person of the Prophet through various forms of media. People therefore need to understand the role that Muhammad plays, not just in the life of Islam and in the history of the world, but in the faith and spiritual development of every individual Muslim. But Islam is about a, a way of life, a faith commitment in response to God. Therefore, one has to come to know and to love that which one studies. I want to seek in Islam the voice of God speaking to humanity, and that includes me. So the Quran is guidance for me, the Prophet is, is example for me, the life of Muslims should be a lived witness of that guidance for me, and I need to expose other people to that if I am to be an authentic teacher about Islam. Dr. Chris Ewer. It's your food that's going cold. <laughs> Friends, thank you very much for uh, honoring me this evening. It is, of course, an honor for me to celebrate three years of Atal Bait TV. And it's also a pleasure, therefore, to know that I'm only three years old. <laughs> because I think that I have been around uh, on the channel since the first year. I just want to say one word to you which has not been sufficiently underlined this evening, and that is the way in which Atal Bait TV and other things in which we're involved has a hugely important role to play in taking the message and understanding of Islam to non-Muslim people. It is not just that you are talking within the community, but we have a huge responsibility to help people to understand what Islam is about in wider society. And so I thank you very much for honoring me and I dedicate it in that purpose to help people to understand better about Islam. Thank you. Our final award for this evening for his outstanding services to the Muslim community. Mullah Asghar, affectionately known as Mullah to everybody in the community and outside the community, was a man who was dedicated in the service of not only the community but the entire humanity. He worked long hours and spent sleepless nights to make sure that he did his best the, for the propagation of the Muslim of Ahl al-Bayt. Mullah started his life as a volunteer worker in Mombasa, Kenya. He went on to continue to be self-taught, teaching and learning Arabic, Persian. He was fluent in six languages. When he moved into the United Kingdom in 1972, he thought that there was a need now to form a worldwide platform so that the work done all over the world by the Khoja Shia community could be integrated, could be monitored and we could be done at much better levels. It is extremely difficult to find such a personality because this was a man 
who was unique. He would be comfortable in a gathering when he was sitting with elderly people, when he's sitting with youths, or even when he's sitting with children. He was so dedicated to his work that once he was convinced of a certain cause, of a certain project, he went all out to ensure that that project resulted into completion. I remember his words at one time when we were struggling in Uganda to repossess our religious centers in that country. And he told me, Asghar, remember, once you start the work of the Imam, rest assured that help will come from hidden quarters and hidden sources, and this work will always be accomplished. Mullah passed away in the year 2000, but the community misses him. Others still today miss him. Mullah has left behind a legacy and we as custodians of the work that he started, we continue to strive on the same path and we exist to serve, we continue to serve in all fields of economics, of religion, of social needs of this community and others. The famous uh, statement which Mullah made was, I do not pray to Allah for the acceptance of my small deeds but I pray to Allah to give me an opportunity to serve and whenever he got another next opportunity to serve he in his mind was convinced that Allah has accepted his previous work and that's why he was given this opportunity now to embark on another project and he said when I meet my Lord I will tell my Lord thank you my Lord Thank you, my Lord, for giving me life. The late Marhoum Mullah Azhar and collecting the award on his behalf is Sean Abbas, Secretary General of the World Federation. Can I just have your attention for a few moments, just a few moments for the speech, and also if we can recite a Surah Al-Fatiha for the Marhoum Mullah Azhar. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم It is a deep privilege for us at the World Federation to collect this award on behalf of a truly inspirational, iconic leader Marhum Mullah Azgarli M.M. Jaffa Not only did Marhum Sahib serve with simplicity and integrity he maintained honesty and tenacity throughout marhum mullah azgar showed unrivaled levels of commitment and unrelenting dedication above all marhum mullah sahib was a visionary and i remember as a 10 year old child in birmingham listening in a meeting of the World Federation. And at that time, 17 years ago, Marhum Mullah Sahib talked about having TV channels that show the madhab of the Shia faith. At that time, we had five channels, BBC One, Two, Three, and Channel Four and Channel Five. But now look at us, we are showing that reality coming true. And look at Ahlul Bayt TV and the wonderful work they're doing. I want to leave you with this quotation that you may have heard before, but which always leaves me, which always leaves me feeling enthused to do community work because we have so many community workers in the room. Marhum Mullah Sahib said, I don't pray for his acceptance of my amal as much as I pray for the opportunity to serve. And the day he grants me a new opportunity to serve, I believe and I will believe the previous ones have been accepted. And I hope till my last breath the opportunities are there. And when the Almighty Allah calls me back, I will be able to tell my Lord, thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you so much once again for this award and I humbly accept it on behalf of Marhum Mullah Sahib and I'm sure once again we can recite Surah Fatiha for him.
another person that we would like to remember, but not in an award, but just on the stage here, is someone that the Ahl Bayt team, and I think there was only three or four of them at the time, went to a few days before the channel was supposed to launch in Manchester. This person, by the name of Abu Zahra Abud, passed away this year. This person, when the brothers went to him, including I think Sayyid Mahdi, and asked him that we need to start the channel next week. The first question this person said was, how much do you need? They said 80,000. And from my understanding, he told them, go home, and inshallah, the money will be in your bank accounts tomorrow. This person has always been a support for us every time we're in need of funds. Then he has always been someone to give a hand to us. And he has been a person where he prefers his name not to be mentioned. Where he was doing this work for the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam without telling others that he was doing this. But this year he passed away. His son is with us today at the gala dinner. But if we can recite a Surat Al-Fatiha for his soul. <laughs>